Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode I'm going to take a chance to or take time to answer a question that I get all the time. I've been on the Camera Raw bandwagon and the Lightroom bandwagon for years now and I just love Camera Raw because one, it's simple to use, two, it's non-destructive. However, the question I get is, well, I don't have a camera that shoots in RAW. Am I lost? Do I not get to take advantage of this? And the answer is, with the latest versions of Camera Raw, you do get to take advantage of Camera Raw, even if you have a camera that doesn't shoot in RAW. And of course, every camera you could buy today, digital camera, shoots in JPEG. Every scanner you, you scan today can scan JPEGs and TIFFs, or produce JPEGs and TIFFs. So you can use those files in Camera Raw to get most of the same benefits that you would have with a RAW file. Not all of them, but most of them. So let me show you how it works. Let's jump into a folder here, and it's a folder of JPEGs. I'm not gonna touch a RAW file during this entire presentation. And here's the problem that people run into, is that here's a photo that I wanna correct, I wanna color correct, or correct the white balance, and I wanna do it in Camera Raw because it's easy. However, if I double click on it, it opens up in Photoshop because that's what JPEGs do. I've got my default Photoshop set up for JPEGs and when you double click on one, it opens. So I never get to access the Camera Raw controls in Photoshop when I just double click on a file because once the file is open, you can't open that file in Camera Raw anymore. So let's close it. Let me show you the other way to do it. I'm gonna show, it, show you how to do it in Photoshop because that's where the question usually comes up. But then I'm going to show you my preferred way to do it, which is a better way, I think. But let's go ahead and start with Photoshop. So how do I do this? Instead of double-clicking the file, let's go to our File menu and choose Open. We'll point it at the same exact folder with that same exact JPEG that we just opened a minute ago. And here's where you make the choice to tell it to open up in Camera Raw instead. Right now, the format is telling me, hey, that's a JPEG. I'm going to open it up for you. But... You, you trick it. You tell it, no, 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 I know that's a JPEG, but I want you to treat it as a RAW file. I want you to open up in Camera Raw instead of JPEG. So all we did was change the format from JPEG to Camera Raw. So now when I open it, I'm going to get a little, little warning because of the screen resolution I'm working at, but yours will open just fine. So here's my warning saying I'm, I'm below 1024 and 768. I'm just going to ignore that because I am at a resolution I can use. And now I'm looking at that JPEG file inside a Camera Raw. This is where I get to use all my Camera Raw controls, or the vast majority of them, and this is non-destructive. It will write these changes to the JPEG's metadata and not actually physically change the file unless I want it to. So... How would I color correct this in Camera Raw? Well, if I were in Photoshop, I'd have to go to curves or levels or all kinds of other things to figure out how to do. In Camera Raw, I love it because there's a white balance eyedropper. I can go ahead and click on something that should be 18% gray. And if you don't happen to have 18% gray, in this case, the spoon would probably work. But I'm just going to go ahead and chance it on the tablecloth that should be white or something that should be black. Well, in this case, this tablecloth probably should be white. And if I go ahead and click it, boom, I've got instant color white balance correction inside a Camera Raw that's much easier to do than it is inside of Photoshop. And if I had multiple images open, I can select them all and do it as a batch operation. That's what I love about Camera Raw. It's just so much easier than doing this kind of work inside of Photoshop. Now, if I didn't like the white balance I got, I can pick a different spot and it will continue. Ooh, I even like that one a little bit better, right on the spoon. It will continue to do an adjustment on any spot that I click on. I can make it a little bit warmer or make it a little bit cooler, depending on where I click. So I can keep clicking until I either pick a spot that I like or I can manually go over and adjust the temperature control to kind of warm that up just a bit or a lot. <laughs> you get the idea based on your preference for what you think the proper white balance should be. And white balance is one of those things where proper white balance isn't always best white balance. It's subjective. So you pick the white balance that looks best for you. I could also do things like adjust the exposure, maybe brighten that image up a little bit, 
and maybe give it a little bit more clarity and sharpening and a little bit more punch, but you get the idea. I can go ahead and do the things I want to do with it. Now, what happens next? At this point, this image is corrected the way I want to correct it. I can open it and it will open a corrected version of it inside of Photoshop. I can click done and not, it will just close camera raw, close the image, but the changes will still be in the metadata. So the next time I open up that image from here on out, it will open in camera raw and it will have those settings. Or I can save a copy of the image over here on the left hand side, save image. And this will allow me to save it out in another format, like another JPEG or a Photoshop file or TIFF file, whatever I want with those settings. In other words, that's what makes it non-destructive. I'm never applying these settings to the original file. I can make a copy of it. I can open it up, but the original file will remain unchanged. All right, so now let's go ahead and open it up. And I've got the original file open. Now, if I save it, in this case, I would be saving over it because it's a JPEG file, and that's one of the differences. Raw, you can't save over it, but a JPEG, I could. But at least now I've got it corrected. I've got a starting point that is, it started out as non-destructive. I can go back and continue to adjust that, and make changes to it. And I got a lot of the work done, a lot of the correction done easily inside of Camera Raw without having to do a lot of manual work with levels and curves and other options inside of Photoshop. Okay, now I said this was one way to do it. I didn't say, you know, I said I have a preferred way. My preferred way of working in Camera Raw is actually doing it well, actually, my preferred way is doing it in Lightroom, but for Photoshop users that don't have Lightroom, my preferred way of doing it is in Bridge. So let's close this, and it's going to say, do we want to save the changes? I'm going to say no. Now, let's pop over to Bridge. And when we go to Bridge, notice that we're looking at the icons of that um, folder, and you'll notice that this one is corrected. This is the JPEG we were just working on in Camera Raw, and it's as we didn't save it. Remember, I said don't save changes, but it's applying the camera raw settings in the preview and letting me see exactly what that's going to look like. You also notice in the upper right hand corner, we get a little thumbnail that looks like two sliders, two triangles, that's letting me know some kind of camera raw adjustment has been made on that file. All right, so now we can continue working on that one in camera raw, or we can go on to the other ones and work on. Now I'm going to select two in this case, just because I told you we could batch process. And with these two images selected, now I want to open these in Camera Raw, but this is my preferred way to do it. I don't do it in Photoshop, I do it in Bridge, because Bridge has Camera Raw built in as well. So I can go up to my File menu and I can say Open in Camera Raw, and it, or Command R in this case on Mac, Control R on Windows, and it will open those two images, yes I know about the resolution, in Camera Raw for me. So Photoshop at this point doesn't even have to be open or launched. I'm working inside the Camera Raw that is built inside of Bridge. All right, so this is Bridge CS5 with Camera Raw in it. And I can go ahead and work on either picture. I can select either one and do whatever I want to do to them. If I select both of them, whatever changes I make will happen to both images at the same time. So. People always say, oh, I don't shoot in RAW because it takes too long to process. Well, depends on what you're doing. If I had 100 wedding photos selected right now and they all needed a white balance adjustment or they all needed some adjustment, I can grab all 100, make all my adjustments, and it will do it to all 100 at the same time or 1,000 or 2,000, whatever it is. So, for example, if I and I'm going to exaggerate here, if I wanted to change the exposure of these night scenes to be much brighter, I wouldn't do this, but I'm just letting you know. You notice that it did both of them. So I got them both selected. It's applying the same adjustment to both images at the same time. And again, I just have two selected. This could be 200, 2000, whatever. So I can reset it. I can put them back to the way they were. And by the way, I, a tip there, I held down the option or alt key to get reset instead of cancel because I didn't want to close it. And uh, these images need a little noise reduction here because they were night scenes at, at a uh, particularly, probably a high ISO. So we've got some noise going on there. And I'm just going to go ahead and switch over to this third tab here in the tabs that you can work in inside of Camera Raw. 
And on this third tab, I'm going to go in and adjust the luminance noise. Let's go ahead and just bring that correction forward. And again, it's doing that to both images at the same time. There's not much color noise in there, so I'll kind of leave that where it is. Also crank up the detail a little bit. I'm exaggerating this slider as well because a lot of times it's hard to see this on a compressed video. But I'm adjusting the noise for both of these images at the same time without having to go back and forth between them. So again, this was prior to the noise reduction where we start to see all the grain and crank up the noise reduction, uh, which is as much better in CS5 and Lightroom 3 and we get a much better noise reduction, keeping a lot more of the clarity than we ever could before. And again, at this point, I can click Done, or I can click Open, and open up both of those images, or either one of those images inside of Photoshop, to continue doing whatever it else, whatever else Photoshop I would need to do inside of them. But you get the idea is that you can start with JPEGs, start with RAW files, start with TIFFs. You can work with them inside of Camera Raw, and do the things you need to do to them without having to go to Photoshop for some of the easier things to, to do that are inside of uh, Camera Raw. So that's just a quick look at how you can use Camera Raw, yes you can, anyone can now, on a camera or an image that doesn't shoot in Raw. Granted, you'll get more controls in Raw, you'll get things that, you, you know, that are really non-destructive like white balance, because when you shoot in JPEG, the white balance is burned into the file, but in RAW it's not. So there are some advantages to doing RAW, but you still, for everyone else that's shooting JPEG, you still get the ability to have ease of use of correcting your images using Camera Raw, even though you don't start with Camera Raw images. So that's just a quick tip. Hope you enjoyed it on using Camera Raw. Again, do it in Bridge. It's easier, faster than having to manually go file open inside of Photoshop. And of course, Lightroom, the develop module is Camera Raw, so you're all set there as well. That's it. Take care. Thanks for watching. My name's Terry White.